Hey y'all, this is Molly Rose and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am doing a video I have never done before. I am doing a Q&A and I'm going to be talking about Banded, the musician competition, the TV show that I was a part of. And I'm just going to be talking a little bit about it. And then on my social media, I asked you guys to ask any questions you guys had about it. And I have a whole list of questions that I'm going to get to. So to start out with, I'll just kind of explain the premise of it and how I kind of um, came to be on the show. Because I know if you guys follow me, you saw that I kind of vlogged the whole experience, but there's so much more that went on behind the scenes and things that I didn't even think to vlog that I thought would be really cool to talk about. So basically the premise of the show is 25 musicians living in a house together and we each get put into five bands and we get put with a songwriter and then it's pretty much the, the premise is like a new take on Battle of the Bands. So then we had six live shows and we had to write a song each week and then perform the song in front of a panel of judges. And we had, you know, people that won that week. So like we had songs of the night and then we had a band that at the end won the whole competition. So it is like a Battle of the Bands pretty much, but it's random. So the people that I was in a band with, I had didn't know them, never heard of them before I came on the show. So that was the really cool part of it was that it was Battle of the Bands, but it was like random Battle of the Bands. And my band actually ended up winning, which was absolutely amazing. I was put in a band with four other people and my band was called Starland. And we kind of went the more kind of rock paramore route, I would kind of say and we ended up winning the whole competition, which was really cool. And it was two months of my life where I was in isolation and I wanted to talk about it because it was a really cool experience and something that I definitely will never experience in my life again. Um, and I thought it was really cool that there's a show out there now that features musicians and not just like American Idol because there's like 10,000 American Idols out there. Um, so yeah, I thought it was, it was really cool and I just want to talk about it. Let's get started with the questions. So the first one, how did you get on the show? So I got reached out to on social media about the show, probably back in 2020 of like August, I got reached out to. Um, and at first I totally thought it was like a scam or because it's, the show's never happened before. So there was nothing really to show for it, you know? It's not like, oh, you know, The Voice, they've had 20 seasons. So it's like, oh yeah, you're going on The Voice. So at first I was like, this seems like a little, I don't really know what's going on with this. But I was actually moving to Nashville already because I've always wanted to live in Nashville. So I was actually already moving to Nashville when they this was going to be filmed. And it was filmed uh, about an hour away from Nashville, Mount Juliet. And we filmed the live shows in Nashville. So, I agreed to go on the show and I didn't really know what to expect. And it was a really chaotic time in my life. I moved from Los Angeles to Nashville and I got to Nashville kind of mid September and I moved into the house um, about a month later. And it was like a really chaotic time in my life. So yeah, we'll get into that later. Was the songwriting process hard? Yes, the songwriting process was hard. I didn't really know how much songwriting was going to be involved in it when I signed up for it because I knew that it was a show where we had to do songwriting, but I didn't really know that like our band was going to be doing it, I guess. I don't know because all of the songs that we played on the show, our band wrote. So we wrote our songs with our songwriter and our mentor, Wendy Starland, who is absolutely amazing. She's just the kindest, sweetest human in the world. If you don't know who she is, go look her up. She um, founded and created Lady Gaga and she wrote Lady Gaga's first album. I mean, she's she creates stars. So we wrote our six songs with Wendy and we all had a big part in the songwriting process. For me, it was especially hard because I've only had minimal amounts of... Um, you know, songwriting experience. And I'm not a, really a songwriter. I, I mean, I'm a drummer, I'm a musician. That's where my wheelhouse is. But I think I definitely contributed more 
to, um, you know, adding all like the drum parts in the songs, like that was all me and stuff like that. So that's, that's what I did mostly. So, but yeah, it was fun. It was cool to see, to really be in the songwriting process and like literally being forced to do it day and night because we did it day and night. Did you write the lyrics or the melodies first? I know that people, people write songs differently, but for us, we usually wrote the melodies first. That's what I remember is like Rob and um, Will would be on the guitars and they would start jamming something out. And then I would get on drums and we would start jamming something and we would create the melodies first. Yeah. Like for Code Yellow, which was our first song, we wrote the melody first and then the lyrics came later on. So, yes. Did you have to buy your own outfits? Um, yes and no. We had to buy our own outfits. So we had wardrobe people and the wardrobe people were amazing. They were the sweetest. And they would like buy clothes for us and then also piece together clothes that we had. So it was kind of a mix. Like for our finale, we rented our outfits um, from the showroom in Nashville, but that was actually something really fun that I got to do because I, I kind of became obsessed with my band's outfits and our image. Cause that's a really important thing that a lot of people don't think about is a band's image. So I kind of took that upon myself to make sure that our band was always looking good. And we had like themes every week. Like I remember, when the week we did We Are Stars, we did Avril Lavigne week. Like if you go back and look at our outfits, um, Rob is wearing a shirt that says like, I love skater girls or something. And I was wearing like a sweater vest with like a button down white shirt and like Vans, like it was very Avril Lavigne. So that's just an example of that. Were you nervous being in front of so many people? And were you nervous being on TV? Um, I think at first, being filmed was kind of weird because the cameras would come to the house that we were living in and film us. And that was kind of weird at first because you have to like act normal. And actually a lot of stuff that they filmed at the house, they did not put on TV. So they kind of, they didn't put a lot of stuff they filmed on TV, but at first it was weird. Um, but then when we were doing like the live shows and stuff, no, it was just like, honestly, it was like playing a concert. It really was. Um, I mean, the municipal is huge. That's definitely like a couple thousand. I don't know how big it is. I think it's like a 10,000 cap room. I mean, it's big, like it's, it's an arena. Um, but it wasn't scary cause I, it's, it's just my job, I guess. But yeah, it was definitely weird at first being filmed. That's for sure. And if you've ever been to a TV filming, it is so much different than a concert because what we would do is we would like on our show days, you know, we would get to the municipal and we would have a sound check. There would be nobody there. And then we would, you know, get dressed and it's basically hurry up and wait. That's what it is. So you would literally wait around almost all day to be filmed for like 10 minutes. Like it's so weird filming a TV show. It's very weird. Um, and we would have to do interviews and get our hair and makeup done and get our costumes done and do whatever they needed us to do in that time period. But it's like you go on stage and the judges are just sitting there and you just have to be silent. So you're just like standing there with your instrument and then the director will be like, okay, three, two, one tracks. And then the tracks will like play with our click. And then we start playing and sometimes like middle of the song, they'll stop because they have a sound issue or a camera battery went dead or whatever, for whatever reason. So it's, it's very interesting. It's not like going to a concert when you're filming a TV show, it's like stop and go. And then the judges will be judging you. And then the director will be like, cut, Mark, you need to say that again. And then Mark will have to like say it again with like a different inflection. It's really weird. If you ever can go to a live filming of something like The Voice or something, I would uh, I would take it. Very cool. Sorry, I went off on a little rant there, but I thought that was a good a good part to put that in. Did you and the other drummers compare tech techniques slash learning experiences? Sometimes we would. Um, like we would do a lot of like warm ups together and stuff. Like me and Eli would do like we'd like mess around and do um, and do warm ups 
together. And I remember one day, um, me and one of the other drummers, Casey, we were we were warming up on a pad at the municipal, and Jim Riley came over and he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna show you guys some warm ups." So he was doing warm ups with us, and he is the drummer for Roscoe Flats. So that was super cool because you know me, I'm a huge, I'm a huge country nerd. So that was amazing for me. What equipment of your own were you able to use on the show? So I know on the show we had a bunch of drum sponsors. And the only equipment that I used for our live shows were uh, my Peisty cymbals. So yeah, those were amazing. And my drumsticks, because we did, we did have a drumstick and a cymbal sponsor, but I got to use Vader and Peisty, which I've been with for a while now. So that was awesome. Um, what drums were used on the show? Oh, we had the best drums in the world. We had drums from Drum Paradise and they were the Gretsch Broadcaster. That was the one that we had on the stage for the live shows. And then the ones in the house, I think the ones in the house were all Gretsch because we had three other drum sets in the house. Um, and so I think we had Gretsch, all the hardware was DW. I mean, all top of the line stuff, like in mint condition. It was some of the best drums I've ever got to play on. Uh, we were sponsored by Remo and I think all the other drummers use Zildjian and Vic Firth. So that was pretty cool. But we had a drum tech named Harry who was the drum tech for Keith Urban and he owns Drum Paradise and he was the absolute best. I felt like a princess um, because I've never, I've never had a drum tech in my life. I've always had to do it myself. So it was really cool um, having a taste of what it feels like if you were like Keith Urban's drummer to like literally have someone like he knew exactly after the first show, he knew exactly where to put every single one of my drums. So like I would come up and my drums were in where they were supposed to be. And I'm so picky. Oh my God. I am like a little bit of a prima donna when like my in-ear mix has to be perfect. Like my drums have to be angled the right way. Like I am totally let that person. So it was very cool um, to have somebody. Oh, we have a cat in the picture. Right here. Here, you're going this way, buddy. It was very cool to have someone uh, get to take care of all of my drum needs. Oh, this is a good question. I know you can play any genre, but you're a country, <laughs> but you're a country drummer girl. I'm guessing your band will not be recording country music. How do you feel about that? That's a that's a really good question. If you watch some of my vlogs, um, I talked about this a little bit in my vlogs, but I never really got super into it. So like I said, we were all randomly put into bands. And so I was put with our singer, Jacqueline, was country. She loves country music. I love country music. And then the three other boys that we were put with were like pop punk, rock, metal, like that side. So, and then Wendy Starland is like, she writes like pop bangers. We had to find a middle ground for all of us. And at first I was very worried about that because it's hard to please six people. That's always hard in any situation, any band situation I've been in, it is so hard to get everybody to agree on something when there's six people with six very different personalities. So I was very worried at first and I wasn't too happy at first about being put with a not country band because I really, I mean, you guys all know country is like my, that is my end all be all. Like I want to be playing on stages with Brooks and Dunn and like John Party one day. Like that's what I want to do. Um, so at first I wasn't super happy, but my attitude completely, completely changed after we wrote our first song code yellow within like the first three days of being in the house. And I loved it. I love that. Like kind of Paramore vibe. Like I love pop music. Like if I could play anything, like I love pop. Um, and I have a ton, I probably have more experience playing pop than I do country, which is funny. So I loved going that kind of like Paramore, like pop punk rock direction, kind of like mixing and all that thing with like that pop songwriting that Wendy brought. I loved it. So I am obsessed with Starland and I cannot wait to record music because really when it, when it comes down to it, like, I think for me, like that part of that question is how do you feel about it? I think that good music is what I like. I just like good music. I like music and that's, you know, very subjective to anybody. Cause I'm sure people would listen to Brooks and Dunn and think it's horrible, but I love it, you know? 
So to me, it's just music that makes me feel something. And Starlin's music makes me feel something. And it's the words are meant with love and with care. And I love that. So I love it. How were the jam sessions, location and length? How much homework was involved in songwriting? We did have a pretty much all we did when we weren't filming was jam sesh and they were they were very long. So in the house that we lived in, we had three practice rooms and we would always practice in this one that was kind of like off of the house, like upstairs in the garage. And we would pretty much, oh my gosh, we would wake up on the days that we weren't filming. So we would probably only film twice a week, um, like the live shows twice a week. And we pretty much spent every waking, breathing moment writing songs. Like we would wake up and have breakfast. We would go on a walk, have our coffee, and we'd start songwriting maybe around 11. And then we would get done at 2 a.m. or midnight or 11 p.m. Like we would get done We'd work all day. Like, and I think that was definitely the thing that set us apart. Um, is that we worked or we worked so hard and we wrote so many more songs than you saw, and we wrote so many more versions of songs that you guys didn't see because we were just trying to perfect, you know, the songs that we had. And I mean, honestly, like we had nothing else to do. You know, it was like that was pretty much all that we did for two months was write songs and be with each other. Um, which is something that I probably will never get to do again, which now that I look back on, I'm like, oh, I miss doing that. Now that I'm back in the real world, I really miss that. How much pressure were you under? Um, I was under a lot of pressure. <laughs> I'll say it was, it was a lot of pressure. I think that I got to a point in the show where honestly, like, I'll be honest, when we first got into the house and stuff, I wasn't like, oh, I want to win this. That was never like the goal. Like, I don't know. I wasn't, I didn't think that I wanted to win. And then after like week one, after like probably Code Yellow and like our second week song, I was like, yeah, so we're going to win. Like I was like, and once I get my mind set on something, my mind is set on something. So then at that point, um, I took everything a lot more seriously than I had been. And I was under a lot of pressure because I made myself under a lot of pressure and we did win. So it was worth it. Who were some of the celebrities you got to work with on the show? So we didn't really get to, I guess, work with like celebrities, but it was like musicians. Like we, we worked with musicians that people know of. And I wrote them all down because, um, there was just too many. There was a lot of people that were, that had very high notoriety that were involved with the show. Like one of the judges, DJ Swivel, he's written songs for Beyonce, Chainsmokers, Selena Gomez. He writes like top 100 billboard songs. Like he's, his list of songs that he's written is literally insane. Like songs that we all listen to. And the other judge, Mark Shulman is Pink's drummer. Um, Vince Neil was a judge on the last episode, um, Motley, who's in Motley Crew, And he said that our band's banger, which was our last song that we won with, uh, that we sounded like Queen. So that was probably the highlight of anything anyone ever said was he said that we sounded like Queen. And Jason Chef, he was the bass player in Chicago. He was really sweet too. Uh, Bill Champlin, he was also in Chicago. Uh, Jim Riley, drummer for Rascal Flatts. So Jason, Bill, and Jim, they were in the house band. And I know like the guitar player in the house band is like CeeLo Green's guitar player and stuff. Like they all, everybody in the house band is like, is like known in the musician world. And then we had some people come to the house and talk to us and did some like mentorships with us. Kevin Lyman, the founder of Warp Tour. That was cool. I know a lot of the boys in the house were really excited about that. He came to the house and did like a whole... Um, like image building session with us. It was really cool. And Kip Winger, the bass player for Alice Cooper came to the house and he did a, um, he listened to one of our songs and gave us feedback and he loved our song. We played our week two song for him and he loved it. I can't remember what our week two song was. It was so long ago, but he loved our song and he was amazing. And I also got asked, is Brandon Jenner nice? Brandon Jenner was the host of the show and he's um he's a jenner 
you know, Kylie Jenner. He's he's the somehow related to them. Um, and yeah, he was really sweet. He like would go around and talk to everybody. I remember the first conversation I had with him, he came up to me and like knew my name and I was like, oh, hi, I've never talked to you before. But yeah, he was really sweet. He was very, very nice. And he was always walking around like talking to people all the time. What was the timeline for each episode? So it's a little fuzzy because we recorded six live shows and those we recorded live shows pretty much like all day. We would record a live show all day, but there was one time where we recorded two live shows in a day. Oh my God, that was the worst day of my life. We recorded two live shows in one day and it takes like 12 hours to record one live show. So it took like, oh God, that was a horrible day. The day we had to record two live shows because sometimes like in the beginning we would have like a week to write our songs. And I mean, like I'm talking about we would write our songs. We would go record a demo of the song because we had to have a demo recorded of the song for um, for the lighting. And we would have to get our wardrobe figured out. We'd have to get our plotting for the stage figured out. Like it was insane. As we started getting further and further in, like I remember for the last show for the finale, we recorded episode five in the finale, like three days apart from each other. So it was all very sporadic how we filmed everything, but it was, it was very hard. It was really hard. Um, and we didn't have a lot of time to write songs. We really didn't have a lot of time in between to write songs. What was it like living in the house with so many people? Uh, did you have to cook, clean, that kind of stuff? It was, it was really cool. I wish that in the show they would have showed more of us in the house together. I know at first they wanted to make it almost kind of like a big brother kind of thing, but then it didn't go that route. Um, but we lived in this like huge mansion in Mount Juliet on the lake. Um, and it was like a corner house. So it was like, we had the lake all around us and there was like this boat dock. Oh my gosh. It was the most beautiful house I've seen in my entire life. And there was only like a couple girls on the show. There was only, I think four girls that lived in the house. So we had like this huge room. We had like two girls rooms and like three girls were in each room. So that was great. Like we had a lot of, we had a lot of space and the house was honestly so big that it didn't feel like super cramped having 25 people live in there. Like it really didn't seem super cramped because it was so big. The one thing I will say is it was loud because we had the three practice rooms in the house. So that was loud. Sometimes it would get like so annoying when you're just like trying to go to bed and you just hear drums. I love drums, but not at midnight when I'm trying to go to bed. But yeah, that was probably the worst part. And we did have to cook, but we didn't have to like buy any of the food. We had someone go out and buy us the food. Uh, we had to do our own laundry. We didn't have to do like any deep cleaning, but like we had to do our own laundry. We had to cook, but we had all of the food would be bought for us and we could pretty much ask for whatever food we wanted, which was great. And a lot of times people would just cook like big things of spaghetti or big, we'd cook, you know, five pizzas all at once or something like that. Um, but on all the filming days, we did not have to cook, which was amazing. What was the hardest part of being on the show? That's a great question. I would say just being able to adapt to every situation that was thrown at us because it was a pretty chaotic environment that we were in. And I mean, we had, I mean, there was like just people around all the time, like producers and people filming and directors and people telling us this and the people telling us this and people telling us this and people telling us and people telling us that we have to be here and we have to be here and we have to be here. And that was hard. That was hard to, to know like who we need to be listening to what is the next step? Will the band go on tour? Did the band win a record deal? So the next step is, I mean, obviously Starland is still together. Um, the show is being aired throughout. I mean, it's hard because this is the first time that this show is being aired and you can watch it 
for free on Access TV, on like your Roku TV. All the episodes are there for free. Also Philo, I, I watched it on Philo. I have the Philo app if you guys have Philo. Um, and they're being aired throughout the summer and throughout the year on a bunch of different networks and different countries and everything. And we are going to get a record deal. Um, that's in the works. I mean, good things take time. So yes, we will hopefully be recording some music soon and hopefully, you know, we can make something awesome come of it. I'm just, I'm just grateful for whether, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I'm just, you know, so grateful for the experience because it's definitely something that not a lot of people get to, will, will ever get to experience. Um, and I'm just so grateful that I got to be around so many amazing musicians and, you know, amazing songwriters that have written songs for Tim McGraw and every band had an amazing songwriter. It was amazing to compete with other bands that were putting out songs that could be on, you know, country billboard. Like it was very, it was very cool. And I will always cherish that and miss that. Would you do it again? I guess I just kind of answered the question. Yes, I would definitely do it again. I would say, I know I kind of talked about this in the beginning, it was definitely a chaotic time in my life and the timing was really hard and something that I, I mean, everything happens for a reason, but the timing of the show was really hard. I had just moved to Nashville. I'd only been here for a couple weeks and I was like literally grinding, playing like 10 shows a week, like just trying to get my name out there. Um, and then I had to leave for two months and like not talk to anyone. So that was really hard because when I came home, I pretty much had lost all the gigs that I had got. And so it was hard, like it was really hard. I came home and just tried grinding again and it was slow season in Nashville. And I was at a crossroads before I came on the show. I got asked to be in a band with a pretty well-known country artist and I turned that down and I was really sad about that. Um, but you know, good things come and I know that things happen for a reason and I would, I, I think I would do it again. I definitely think I would do it again. Um, but I know God's timing is his timing. So I'm just grateful for the opportunity and everything happens for a reason. I hope you guys enjoyed my 20 to 30 minute rant. Um, I've never done any videos like this before. I thought it would be cool to just get a little bit more personal with you guys. Cause I know I usually just post like drum covers and you know, videos of how to do this and how to do that. But I think it's cool to learn from other people's experiences and kind of understand what's behind the drumsticks. I know that that sounded dumb, but yeah, if you guys want me to do other Q's and A's about my life or about, you know, I don't know, going to music school or being a working drummer, like what that's like, let me know in the comments. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video again. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Molly Rose Drums. TikTok at Country Drummer Girl. And you guys can watch Banded the Musician Competition on the Access TV app, on your Roku TV, on your browser. All the episodes are out. Um, and my band won. So you don't have to watch all the episodes, but if you watched any of them, I would watch the finale because it was freaking amazing. The finale, we had um, like fire and pyro and we had a choir and Vince Neil said that we sounded like queens. So you guys can go check that out. I love y'all and see you in the next video. Peace.